All set? Yeah. Are you still there, Chris? I'm here. All right, great. Okay, everybody, uh, let's get started. Thanks for coming. This is our Career Opportunities in the Biomedical Sciences Seminar Series. Uh, these are designed to give you guys an idea of what you can do with your training in molecular biology once you're done here at UCF. We usually have live presentations, which means we're usually limited to speakers in Central Florida, but thanks to Go, we've got a setup now for Skype conferencing. So this is our first Career Opportunities video conference. And I'd like to thank Dr. Reuter for volunteering to be our first guinea pig subject <laughs> uh, speaker <laughs> through uh, this technology. Dr. Reuter, as you can see from the slide, is uh, Vice President of Science at Osprey Biotechnics, uh, an industrial microbiology company. And he's been nice enough to agree to speak with us today about uh, his job and his career in biotechnology. So, Dr. Reuter, thanks for being with us today. And the floor is yours. Thanks, Dr. Teeter. Uh, I appreciate you inviting me to present here and to everyone today in the audience uh, for, for attending, even if Dr. Teeter made you attend. Um, I can see most of you, so if you have any questions, I would encourage you to stop me throughout the presentation. Very free-flowing uh, floor, so I, I kind of like an interactive uh, audience if, if you choose to, to be. So, um, And ironically, Dr. Teeter mentioned you can speak to all of these people throughout the country. I'm in Sarasota, Florida, so it is. So I am kind of the guinea pig here. I decided to do it close. So um, uh, I'll basically get right into the presentation. Again, stop me if you have any questions. Can, can everyone hear me okay? Is it coming through well? Yes. Good. Um, so my name is Chris Reuter. As Dr. Peter mentioned, I believe you have a, a background on me, a biography. I uh, went to the University of Florida for my bachelor's of science and my PhD uh, studying microbiology and cell science uh, in the hosts uh, E. coli and uh, with holophilic archaea, namely Holoferrix volcani. I did uh, a lot of uh, genetic techniques and uh, protein isolation, purification, and genetic studies. Um, I graduated with my PhD in 2006 and uh, immediately uh, got a job here at Sarasota at Osprey Biotechnics. And, and one of the things that you know, I'll be referring to today is I'm trying to open up um, kind of a, a viewpoint. I'm trying to put myself back in the perspective of where, where I was in graduate school and, and my thoughts of, of the world and what was out there and, and try to portray at least a small sector of what it is that I see now to you and, and put myself in your shoes back then. There's a lot of opportunities in terms of career choices out there that you're probably unaware of. Um, obviously, I, I can't cover everything, and I know you'll have a number of other guest speakers who will cover their respective fields, um, you know, biomedical, uh, pharmaceutical, biofuels, biochemicals. So I'm not going to touch on those today. And the reason, uh, that's the reason my presentation is called Live Micro for Biotechnology. So we'll, we'll focus on uh, my company here, Osprey Biotechnics, but also the industries and markets that we serve, which are companies who are using microorganisms in their live state in the application of interest. So um, get right into it. Uh, just a brief background on the history of Osprey Biotechnics. We were actually founded back in 1963 by Larry Blendeni. Um, he started the company under a name Microlife Technics. And what they did back then uh, was to produce cultures for the food industry, namely for yogurts, cottage cheese, uh, black fermented meat products such as sausages. And you'll see some pictures there. And back in the day, before uh, Microlife, around, people actually would have their own small fermenters on site, and they would grow up the, the starter cultures on site and use them, but the problem with that is that if you have to get some sort of contaminant in the fermentation vessel, you wouldn't know until it was too late, until after you inoculated the, the cheese or the meat, and the batch would either have to be thrown away or, or ultimately someone might get sick. So what, what they had come up with was using these beneficial uh, cultures uh, producing them and concentrating them and storing them in, in small frozen containers, kind of like the, 
Um, you remember, may remember as kids, or maybe even kids now, the Minute Maid containers that have that concentrated grape juice or apple juice in it. You used to store these cultures in those types of containers. They'd actually sell them to companies like Hormel, uh, who would produce a lot of pepperoni, and they would use those as their starter cultures, and they were guaranteed and very high cell counts and great activities for reducing the pH of these, uh, of these batches, of whether it be sausage or pepperoni or, or cheese. So from there, the company established an environmental division in the 1970s, and the types of technologies they sought after were using microorganisms for um, uh, the, the breakdown of harmful compounds in the environment, so if it were contaminated uh, soil and groundwater sites, and we'll get into that a little bit uh, later in the presentation. Um, the, all, of, all of the companies but the environmental division was sold in the 80s, and uh, in 1990, we began operating under our current name, Osprey Biotechnics. So, <clears throat> this is just an overview of the markets, our market served, and it'll give you an idea, it's kind of an umbrella, Three different areas which I'll, I'll touch on today uh, the area of bioremediation, uh, agriculture, and contract fermentation. Uh, Osprey Biotechnics really specializes in producing beneficial microorganisms. So we're industrial microbiologists, and the fact that we receive strains from our customers or we have strains that will grow to a uh, highly concentrated level and, and then provide the active ingredients, which are those cultures to our customers for a whole range of applications. And so I'll kind of go through and I'll touch on some of those applications. And I know, again, myself coming out of graduate school, I had no clue that, that there was this type of work and, and going on and that microorganisms were used in, in all of these capacities. So uh, hopefully you'll, you'll gain some eye-opening uh, ideas and experiences through this presentation. And Hopefully that'll give you something to then go look for when you are searching for what uh, career paths are out there. So the first umbrella topic, as I call it, that we'll go over is going to be bioremediation. And there's really, in my mind, four areas of focus under bioremediation. And again, keeping in mind the fact that what we're looking at today is using microorganisms as the active component, live microorganisms in that, in the actual area of interest. So, uh, you know, there may be some other things excluded, but, but we'll be working specifically on that. So, bioremediation, and most of you, I'm sure, have heard of it. You're probably thinking, uh, the first thing that comes to mind is the use of microbes uh, for the breakdown of contaminants in soil, groundwater. Certainly recently, with the large oil spill in the Gulf, uh, a lot of the use for microbes great petroleum hydrocarbons was publicized. Unfortunately, when you have a situation like that, you have a lot of uh, shady types of people come out of the woodwork, so to say, and claim to have all these different microorganisms to do this, that, and the other. But the reality is our, our cultures have been used uh, since the 70s for uh, reduction of petroleum hydrocarbons, uh, chlorinated solvents, and recalcitrant organics. And uh, the majority of the microorganisms utilized for this purpose are centered around the genus Pseudomonas. Pseudomonads are, are well known for their ability to break down these compounds. Um, they're very versatile in their metabolism. Uh, they're ubiquitous and also they're very well adapted to uh, systems that have elevated levels of toxic components. So it makes them ideal candidates for use in breakdown of these uh, organic compounds in situ. So all of the strains that we use for our purpose, we have uh, around 20 patents based around these strains and their applications. Um, and you'll see on the side here, under the first sector of bioremediation, I have the, the environmental sector. So what you have laid out here, we work with a, a partner company called CL Solutions. They're based out of Ohio. And what they do is work with the engineering firms that have been contracted to clean up sites. So whether it's a government issued cleanup, or it's uh, some someone wants to take a property and start building on it. They have to clean up contaminants, and it has to be approved through testing of, of soil and groundwater, 
ensure that the, the contaminants are at, at an uh, acceptable level. So these companies will uh, go on these sites, you see these little X's, they, they will actually drill wells at the various sites around the contaminated area. Each one of these wells gets sampled frequently to determine the levels of contaminant there. Then at certain sites, depending on the way the groundwater is flowing underground, they'll add the microorganisms and then test at other sites for the microorganisms. To do this, we have traditional plating techniques, just enumeration of the pseudomonads with selective augers. We also have developed a um, genetic primer system to detect uh, novel unique genes on the pseudomonads, which can determine uh, I guess semi-quantitatively their presence within a system so that we can tell our clients uh, when a site requires further inoculation. Another area that's, uh, that I would put under the bioremediation umbrella is industrial. And this is where it will probably start to be foreign to many of you, or again, at least it was to me. Um, it's, it's really a multi-billion dollar industry, and there's a, there's a, a lot of companies involved. There's some big players, just like there are in any given in the market or uh, industry. Uh, but the, the market is growing, and I think because of the, um, the appreciation the general public certainly has become to, to have over, say, the last 10, 15 years to for instance, cultures in your yogurt. Now they have common names for bacteria in yogurts. People are recognizing these. Uh, you know, general population recognizes these as a day-to-day -day thing. So the whole probiotic treatment, uh, you know, the, the wave of probiotics has allowed people to become much more familiar, at least in their own mind, with microorganisms. And they're not thinking so much germs as I think 20 years ago when people thought bacteria it was germs. And so that's that's certainly shifting and there's a much more open idea to the use of microorganisms in day-to-day -day activities such as uh, cleaning up, whether it be an environmental site or in this case an industrial. So, And as I go through these, our company doesn't produce all of the products that I will be discussing. Um, we sell concentrated bacterial samples to, to customers who may formulate them. Um, what typically happens is there's three tiers of companies that will work with microbial products for an industrial purpose. There's the company who produces the microorganisms, which we fall into since we do fermentation. There's a company who will then purchase concentrates of microorganisms and then formulate them with their expertise, or in some cases lack thereof, into a cleaning product uh, to, to utilize the efficacy of the microorganism in its respective application. And then sometimes there's people who will purchase the product. I'd say the third tier would be the company who purchases the product and really just use it as any old, old cleaning product. It doesn't really distinguish it from uh, a microbial cleaning product. So we, we're kind of on the top of that tier where we produce microorganisms. We do not sell into all of these applications, but uh, the bacteria are beneficial in many. But I'm going to just for due diligence, I'll go through all of the areas that at least I'm familiar with to give you an idea of where microorganisms are being used. Um, the first would be wastewater treatment uh, for industrial waste. If you, if you take any given company that's producing really anything, any, anything of substance, whether it's a chemical plant, um, laundering facilities, uh, even food processing plants, you end up with a large amount of byproduct, whether that be some sort of chemical, whether it be the byproduct of animal uh, wastes, uh, from processing in a laundry facility, you have a lot of high